Herpes zoster or shingles is a common affliction that one out of three people will experience sometime in their lives. In this video, we'll review herpes zoster and all its manifestations, its complications, and its treatment. Stay with me if you'd like to know more. Shingles or herpes zoster is a disease of the skin and the nerves that is caused by the varicella zoster virus, a human herpes virus that causes two distinct diseases, varicella or chicken pox and herpes zoster or shingles. Humans are the only known reservoirs of the varicella zoster virus, and one in three people will develop herpes zoster or shingles in their lifetime, an incidence that increases with age. In the temperate climates, without widespread vaccination, 90% of children become infected before they reach adolescence, whereas in the tropics, many people only become infected in adulthood when the morbidity that they suffer is much greater. A varicella or chickenpox vaccine is used routinely in some countries to prevent chickenpox in children. Varicella virus is highly contagious and is spread by the airborne or by droplet routes or by direct contact with lesions. Upon entering the airways, the virus replicates and is then transported to the skin and the nerves by white blood cells most likely CD4 cells. After an incubation period of 10 to 21 days, the typical rash of chicken pox appears on the skin. The illness lasts for about four to seven days, but the virus is not cleared from the body, but rather it takes up residence in the sensory nerve root ganglia of the spinal cord and of the brain. Immune cells in the body contain the virus until a stressful event a disease or medication alters the functions of those cells and the virus is at that point able to reactivate. The reactivated virus travels in the nerve to the skin where a red flat rash forms that may progress to vesicles or blisters and then to pus filled pustules and finally crusts over within 7 to 10 days. The skin heals within two to four weeks. People with herpes zoster can spread the rash, but the early flat rash and the crusted over lesions are not contagious. In some cases, there is pain, but a rash never appears in a syndrome known as zoster sine herpete. Reactivation of the virus most frequently occurs in people over the age of 60, because as we age, our cellular immunity weakens. There are often prodromal symptoms that can occur two to three days before the onset of the rash and can include headache, fever, and malaise, or more localized symptoms such as tingling, burning, and itching, or pain in the area. Physicians and patients are often baffled at this point, and the source of the pain usually becomes apparent only after the rash has appeared. Diagnosis of herpes zoster or shingles is usually clinical, but in atypical cases, immunohistochemical or polymerase chain reaction studies can be performed on the fluids or scrapings from the lesions. Postherpetic neuralgia, in which pain persists for more than 30 days after the lesions have healed, is the most common complication of shingles or herpes zoster. At least 50% of people over the age of 50 who develop herpes zoster complain of pain in the area supplied by the affected nerve for months after the lesions have healed. The pain may be constant, aching and burning, or it may be intermittent, stabbing and shooting. And at times it may be severe and affect patients' ability to perform their activities of daily living. Severe cases may cause disturbed sleep, chronic fatigue, weight loss, depression, and anxiety. The pain of postherpetic neuralgia gradually improves with time. If the virus reactivates in the trigeminal nerve, the eye may be affected, leading to a condition known as zoster ophthalmicus. This is a serious condition 
and can lead to blindness. At other times there is facial paralysis and a rash appears in the ear canal, which is known as the Ramsey-Hunt syndrome and can cause loss of sense of taste in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, as well as dizziness and loss of hearing. In some cases, patients develop paralysis that affects their ability to walk. Rarely there may be inflammation of the brain or the lining of the brain known as meningoencephalitis or there may be inflammation of the spinal cord known as transverse myelitis with muscle paralysis. Herpes zoster or shingles can sometimes spread the virus to the lungs or the liver and mortality in these cases can be 5 to 15 percent. More recently shingles or herpes zoster has been found to be associated with heart attacks and strokes. Treatment of herpes zoster or shingles is aimed at pain control and at preventing the occurrence of post-herpetic neuralgia. There are three antivirals that are used in the treatment of shingles, acyclovir, valcyclovir, and famcyclovir. These are most effective if started within 72 hours of the onset of the rash. The antivirals shorten the duration of the illness as well as the associated pain, but they do not prevent postherpetic neuralgia. Corticosteroids can help to decrease the duration of the rash and the pain. We can treat mild pain with acetaminophen or nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories, and more severe pain can be treated with opioids, gabapentin, pregabalin, or nerve blocks. The pain of postherpetic neuralgia can be controlled with lidocaine patches, capsaicin patches, gabapentin, pregabalin, opioids, and tramadol. Presently, there are two vaccines used in the treatment of herpes zoster or shingles. A live attenuated vaccine, Zostavax, and a recombinant adjuvant vaccine, Shingrix. The recombinant vaccine is more effective and decreases the incidence of herpes zoster or shingles by 91% and the incidence of post-herpetic neuralgia by 89% in people over the age of 70. Whereas the live attenuated vaccine decreases the incidence of herpes zoster or shingles by 51% and the incidence of post-herpetic neuralgia by 66% in people over the age of 60. The efficacy of the live attenuated vaccine was negligible by year 8 after the administration of the vaccine, whereas the recombinant vaccine retained 84% efficacy at year 8. There's a higher incidence of local reactions with the recombinant vaccine, but the incidence of serious side effects is similar in the two vaccines. Both vaccines are indicated for patients over the age of 50, and there is no upper age limit for their use. In the U.S., use of the live attenuated vaccine Zostavax was discontinued in November of 2020, so that now patients over the age of 50 receive two doses of Shingrix or the recombinant vaccine separated by two to six months. The recombinant vaccine, but not the live attenuated vaccine, was found to be safe for use in patients with severely suppressed immune systems, including patients with HIV. And you should take the Shingrix vaccine, even if you have already had herpes zoster or shingles, or have already had the Zostavax vaccine or a chickenpox vaccine. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, share, and comment in the section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can support the channel and we can continue to bring you interesting topics in medicine. Thank you.